the first chimney I ever saw him drop, it had to be absolutely accurate because there was about no more than about 50 feet between the mill wall and a wall up the, up the roadside and it had to go in that 50 feet and of course it did, there was no problem but uh, when you think about the technique it's just a case of cutting out half the chimney and that is the way that it will go uh, it won't deviate much from that the biggest risk about when the chimney actually falls is that the condition of the remaining brickwork if that's a little bit unsound it might kick backwards a little bit and leave you a pile of brickwork just behind where the chimney stood that's got to be guarded against as well but uh, the chimney always goes literally within a few feet he could put a marker out and, and he would always demolish the marker a chimney represented the age at which he was, uh, uh, like he many times used to say, he was born 70 years too late. A smoking chimney represented industry, as far as Fred was concerned. Uh, now, once it stopped smoking, then of course its days were numbered, uh, and he would have much preferred to be called in to, to give it a, a coat of overhaul, or a coat of looking at, with a, for the purpose of bringing it back to life, with something going on down below. But... Uh, it was, uh, that wasn't to be, of course. I mean, he realised that the chimneys, to use his phrase, that used to stand up like blades of grass all over Bolton and lots of other industrial towns in Lancashire, uh, were obviously being thinned down as the years went by. And uh, he realised that he might as well, uh, he might as well offer the service of demolishing them because they he didn't, somebody else would. Um... The, uh, it's no time to build a bonfire. Where's these bloody rubber tyres? You know, oh, they're here, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. I just happened to go around one day, uh, three years, just about three years before his death, he said, I've had a bit of bad news. I said, oh, what's up? He said, uh, they've confirmed cancer with me. I said, get away. I said, well, you're feeling all right? He said, oh, I'm feeling fine, yeah. But he said, uh, uh, I had this bit of a kidney trouble. Uh, and he said the, uh, he sent for me and investigated it uh, and he decided uh, I'd one kidney had failed and he'd had to come out so he sort of told them to get on with it and get it out uh, and he said they sent it away for examination and came back and said uh, we're, we're sorry but it's affected we'll have to do a full body scan which they did and they found it in other places as well I said oh well that's not so good I said, how long did they give you? He said, 12 months. I said, you must be joking. He said, no, that's all they give me. I said, well, you're laughing. I said, you've got this tractor to finish then. I said, it doesn't give me long, does it? So uh, he said, no, I must be getting on with it. But uh, he, he never, I never saw him what I would call depressed. Now, that's not to say that he wouldn't be depressed because in his quieter times at home when he wasn't uh, surrounded by his friends and uh, with a load of work to be done uh, obviously it would get anybody down and I'm sure it did he'd be no different than anybody else as regards that but the bit I saw of him and when he was pressing on with his tractor with the aid of a few friends uh, he was quite happy to get on with the job he knew it had to be done uh, and indeed it was done he'd been working on it for 27 years uh, and when he was only given 12 months of age, he didn't finish it inside the 12 months, but I'm quite convinced that the, the, the work he did on that tractor uh, kept him going, it kept his spirits up, because he knew it had to be finished, and I think that's largely responsible for the extra two years that he managed to persuade his body to keep going after the 12 months that the, uh, the doctors had given. I first met Fred Dibner when we, as I say, when we bought He'd got a roller, a road roller, and I bought a road roller. Derelict, both derelict, and we were both doing them up. We were young, we had young families, and it was a kind of um, a, a, a new adventure for us, really. But and he was in about the same position as I was. He was a steam truck, and, was a and um, I met him in that respect. And we used to go to local rallies and things like that. And. Uh, the point about Fred was, in those very early days, you could recognise him even then, that he had a story to tell. He had a wonderful way of telling the story. And people just flocked around him to hear him talk. And um, 
I mean, of course, he liked a, a pint or two. Yeah. Then, and um, the more pints he had, the, the, more the he better talked. he talked, really. <laughs> and um, that's how I remember it, really. Wonderful stories. I mean, I, I wish, and the memory that he had, because yeah. he could remember yeah. all sorts of things, couldn't he? Yeah, really? he, that, he I mean, I'm struggling now to think he, of some of the things that he... You know, that he found quite natural. Yeah, he didn't but get excited or anything over oh, it, no, did he? Oh, no, nothing excited. Yeah. I mean, have you seen, seen him, you know, going up chimneys? I mean, I've seen him. I always remember a time in Lee, and he was working on the church steeple, and there was a pub across the road. I can't remember what the name of the pub was. It's gone now. But I, I remember going in there, and uh, because he was working there, and he'd had seven or eight pints, and he went up this steeple afterwards. I mean, I could barely get home, never mind what the bloody thing. Simple, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we just went. by the number of people that actually turned up on the day. Yeah, I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Yeah. No, it was magnificent. It was, wasn't it? It was like, it was like a, it was like a, like a national yeah. heritage thing. I mean, yeah. there was people there that, I mean, even the, side, even the side streets were blocked with people. Yeah. Offices had shut. I mean, we saw it all because we went through on the engines, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, because it just that much higher up. Bus stations yeah. stopped, the fire stations Offices stopped. stopped, people came out of offices. I think the thing that brought a, a lump to my throat was when we went past the fire station yeah. and did all the appliances on a rainy day lined up on the front, uh, on the front and all the firemen, and I don't think it was just the, the current the watch. The were in as well, office yeah. were in the worst. And they were all stood in their uniforms to attention. And it was uh, quite moving that really. It was, it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the number of people that walked from the church to the cemetery afterwards in pouring rain. Yeah, I mean, well, it was both a ways, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A miserable day. Yeah. Sue um, converted him really, or yeah. changed him from yeah. smoking very heavily yeah. and drinking very heavily yeah. to the man we saw in this last uh, few years on TV and so on, where. Uh, he had all this immense knowledge of, of, of engineering and ar industrial archaeology, uh, but in and that had, he developed that himself. Yeah. Because that didn't come out in his early days. He just had a had a, a way of talking in his early days of telling the story. Um, a born storyteller, really. This this knowledge came later on in life as yeah, he was natural, as he, wasn't as he it? matured. Yeah. yeah. I always remember him uh, coming down on his road roller uh, for the weekend. Uh, it was one of the few steam engines that we managed to invite to the event. And uh, my memories probably of that event were when uh, the local hostelry was the, uh, the pub on the, on the road outside the pit. And the police at that time had put uh, double yellow lines on, down outside and uh, Fred likes a drink obviously as most people do and he went in to participate and have a pint part of his favourite drink, a pint of Guinness and uh, we pointed out very diplomatically that he'd left his roller on the double yellow lines outside and he might experience problems with the local bobby he didn't seem very worried about that because his quip was to say well, I'm sure he'll, the police will find it very difficult to move with the weight of the roller, so I think we can leave it there quite safely. There were so many people there waiting for the funeral to start. Um, there was the, the police and then the, uh, the band, and everything had to be uh, organised by Howard's, the funeral directors, who made an excellent job of it. And the procession set off at about 11 o'clock, in a very dignified manner, making its way down to the parish church in Bolton. Both his sons were driving the two uh, steam engines. One was driving Betsy, uh, and one was driving the other new engine that he'd recently finished this last year. And both of those, uh, it, it was excellent to see them on the day, uh, at the helm, on the engines, uh, playing such a part in the day. It must have been a heart-rendering day for them, to say the least. The guy was uh, such a memorable character. Uh, there'll never be another one like him, and uh, he will be very, very, very sadly missed.
Fred's birthday. Our local rally is in May, and Fred celebrated his birthday um, around the May time. I'm not exactly sure what date his birthday was, but I know that it was close to the uh, Cavalcade rally because um, it had been organised by the powers that be that he were going to have a birthday party in the hotel called the Realton in Rushton. And he'd been at the rally all day signing autographs and, and uh, being the celebrity. But he hadn't really had a chance to sort of have a beer with the engine men. And before he could, he were whisked off in a car and took back to the hotel. And they poshed him up. And uh, the press were informed of Fred's birthday party in the Realton. And we're going to have a few special guests. And someone had baked a cake. And, and that was a sort of... Uh, program for the evening for him but I don't think anybody had consulted Fred because he sort of didn't like the sound of this. Um, how do we know this? Well because later on that evening an old friend of mine was driving back to the rally field and he saw a familiar figure walking from the Realton in Rushton through High and Ferrers in the direction of the rally field. So uh, he pulls over he says Fred he says uh, where are you going? He says, oh, I'm going back to the rally. He says, uh, he says uh, oh, he says, I thought you were going to your birthday party. Oh, he says, I didn't fancy that. He says, uh, he says all the press and all that. He says, so, uh, so I'm on a beer with the lads. So he got in this bloke's car and they took him back to the rally field. Meanwhile, at the hotel, everybody's going like balmy looking for him. Oh, where's Fred gone? Oh, he must be in his room. We'll go up and check and all that. And Fred's gone. The next thing is some phones going. Oh, he says, I remembered something I had to do to the engine. <laughs> and he's not doing nothing to the engine at all. He was standing in the bar with his mates, enjoying a pint of beer. And that was the real Fred. He didn't need a tie to make him uh, popular. He didn't need to be in a hotel with all the posh people and the, and, and, and the press. He could be uh, himself when he got the chance and just... Uh, that stand in a group of chaps, all wearing boiler suits, all covered in soot, having enjoyed a good day's steaming on a rally. I don't think he were ever happier than when he was in that sort of situation, with his hands all covered in muck and a big beaming smile on his face and a pint in his hand. I think I shall remember Fred, as I think most of the engine men will remember Fred, as a true character with a love of steam who not only spread the love of steam amongst those who were already converted, but uh, who was able to bring it to the masses, to give an explanation to those who previously did not understand why we did it, um, as to what a hobby and a lifestyle of steam and traction engine rallies is all about. He was, I think, probably the one most I important uh, character as far as the steam rally movement uh, went, presenting it to the wider world. Um, without the likes of Fred, I don't think the traction engines would be still very well known. I think when people said the word steam engine, they would still think only of railways. Um, Fred opened up that world and uh, since then there's been several other programs um, with doing up old vehicles and traction engines and that but I don't think it would have come to the attention of the people uh, in the same way if Fred hadn't been there to introduce it to them. So uh, yeah I remember Fred not only as a great character, a good friend and um, a companion in the beer tent but also as a man who puts traction engine rallies on the map.